So are all color charts created equal? In today's video, I'm gonna pit the X-Rite Passport video up against the Spider Color Checker 24. And I want you guys to let me know in the comments down below which color correction do you like best, or if you can tell the difference between the two. Let's get into today's video. Hey friends, Peter Fasciano here. Welcome back to my channel. I'm gonna go ahead and put these two color checkers to the test. I'm gonna set my camera back to 5200 Kelvin. So we're at a even playing field. I'm currently shooting on the cine style and I'm gonna go through my process of color correction and exposure and white balance. And we're gonna see which one looks better. But first let's go ahead and reset the camera to 5200 Kelvin. All right, now that it's set to 5200 Kelvin, let's go ahead and put these up against one another. So I'm gonna start with the 18% gray. I'm gonna do the same thing with the color side. Now move on to the passport, the X-Rite passport. All right, let's throw it into Premiere Pro and start doing the color corrections. All right, so the first things that I need to do is just explain my work stations. So I have preloaded down on my timeline the four individual cards uh, that I will be drawing a mask around to isolate them. I am in my color panel and I will be looking at the Lumetri scopes and the effects control. I'll be using the free draw pen to isolate around each of these cards and I'll be flipping back and forth between these two. The three scopes that I'm using, I have my Vetroscope YUV, which is this scope right here. I'm gonna be using this to take a look at the saturation and Luma. I have the Parade RGB, which is right here. I'm going to be using this to look at my white balance. And then the waveform is set to Luma. Down from the waveform type, I just selected Luma. And this is what I'm gonna be taking a look at for my exposure. The panel off to the side is where I will be doing my adjustments for my white balance, you know, either taking some blue or taking some red out or doing my tint with the green and the magentas. I'm going to be using some of these sliders for my Luma for the exposure. And then I'm also going to be getting into the curves panel and taking a look at the hue versus saturation and the hue versus hue for my Vectroscope right here. All right, I think I'm ready to get into it. I'm gonna start with the spider checker, color grading and color correction first, and then I'll move on to the X-Rite. The first two panels that I have here on my timeline, one is of the gray card, the other one is going to be the color panels. I'm gonna apply both of my Lumetri color scope, color grading effects from these two panels onto the one that doesn't have anything in front of my face. So in order to start out, again, just to make sure you guys understand this, color grading, color correction is a personal preference. There really is no uh, steadfast rule on what you're supposed to be doing. If you've done any research and you've looked online, everybody does this slightly different. This is just my uh, workflow. So here we go. The first thing I'm gonna be, be doing is taking a look at my Lumetri scope Luma. I'm gonna go ahead and hide the vector scope. I'm gonna to go to my effects control. I'm gonna select my pen tool and I'm gonna draw a mask around the 15% gray card of the Spider Checker 24. This should draw a complete mask. It's gonna hide everything else. When I go back to my Lumetri scope, you're gonna see that this falls around, you know, 60 to, to 50. These are the IRE scales. Zero is absolute black, uh, 100 is absolute white. A gray card is in the middle, so you want this to land somewhere around 40 to have you know, your correct exposure. So what I'm gonna end up doing is opening up my color wheels. This is middle gray, so I'm gonna go my middle tones and I'm gonna drag this down until this just touches 40. I'm pretty sure I had my exposure right in camera, so I'm just gonna keep this right at about there. The next thing I need to do is take a look at my white balance. So I'm gonna close my Luma and open up my RGB. If I expand this, you're gonna see that the red channel's a little bit high, green and blue look pretty good. So I'm gonna take my basic color correction with my white balance. I'm gonna grab this eyedropper, click it into the gray card, and you're gonna see that this just made a slight adjustment with it. I'm gonna double 
check to make sure that I don't have anything leaning towards the blue or the red, the magenta or the green by opening up my Vectroscope YUV. I'm gonna close my RGB. And this dot in the middle doesn't look like anything is poking out. Uh, if my white balance was incorrect, so this is at negative eight. If I increase towards the yellow and red channel, you're gonna see that little blob come out here. If I go towards the blue, it's gonna to head towards blue. I wanna make sure that that dot is dead center. So I'm gonna go negative 8.0. So I think that looks pretty good to me right there. Now I have my exposure correct and my white balance. I'm gonna open up my RGB and I'm gonna open up my waveform for the next one. I'm gonna go back to my effects control. Now I have my Lumetri color uh, all in this little area. I'm gonna left click, right click. I'm gonna copy this. I'm gonna go to the next panel over, which is going to be my color squares. I'm gonna paste that Lumetri color, which my white balance and my exposure was. I can turn this on and off and you can see how it changed this. So it's on. I'm gonna go through the same process, but this time I'm gonna be taking a look at just the Lumetri scope right here. So I'm gonna go ahead and get rid of my parade and I'm gonna get rid of my waveform. All of these little dots that are scattered around here are represented by all of these little color squares. I just wanna isolate the red, magenta, the blue, cyan, just this square right here. So in order to do that, I'm gonna increase this to 150. So I have the ability to draw. I'm gonna to go to my effects control. I'm gonna click on my opacity and I'm gonna draw a mask around these colors. If I don't get it perfect, it's okay, because I can adjust it. Just drag these corners. So everything is here. And it's important to know that the Color Checker 24, these are full saturation color color squares. The x right are 50% saturation, so you're gonna see that difference here in a little bit. Now that I have my mask drawn, I'm gonna go back to my Lumetri scope. And now you can see that each one of these is pointing directly at its corresponding color. I'm gonna to go to my basic color correction and increase my saturation so you can see that not all of them are falling directly on a color. And this is where the curves come in. So I'm gonna click on my curves. I'm gonna scroll down to hue versus hue. Each one of these white lines is gonna be represented by one of these colors. So I have a blue, the magenta, the red, the yellow, the cyan, or that's green, and cyan. I'm gonna click, I'm gonna press shift and click on one of these colors, and I want you to watch what happens to the bar. So right now I'm on blue, watch what happens to blue as I adjust it. It's gonna move one way or another. I wanna make sure that I get it directly pointing at blue. I'm gonna do the same thing with magenta, I'm gonna make sure magenta is pointed there. Cyan needs to be moved just a little bit. Looks like green's okay, yellow needs to be adjusted, so I'm click shift and move yellow, wrong way. And small little changes will move these lines quite a bit. Red looks like it needs to be changed a little bit. Oop, wrong way. Magenta needs to be moved back a little bit. All right there. All right, so that looks pretty good. I'm gonna go back up to my basic correction and double click on saturation to bring that back to normal. Now, if any of these bars reach past this little uh, parameter here, then Obviously you're oversaturated and I think it has something to do with like broadcast signal. So just make sure that your final product, uh, all of your colors fall within this little area. I'm gonna go back now 
to fit. I'm going to get rid of my mask by going to the effects control. I'm going to delete my mask. So this Lumetri color panel now has everything contained in it. It has all of the changes that I made. I'm going to go ahead and click on it. I'm going to right click my mouse. I'm going to copy this and I'm going to go to the frame and paste it in here just so you can kind of see what it looks like. Now to me this looks a little bit dark. So this is where the color grading comes in. You can now adjust contrast, exposure, whites, blacks to kind of uh, give it a certain look the way that you want to give it. I'm not going to do any of that because I want to compare this to the x right So let's now go ahead and move on to the x right and do the exact same thing with it. I have a couple of things to point out on the x right color checker. All right, starting with the x right you can tell that there is a little bit of a difference between the selections of our gray card as opposed to the spider checker. Spider checker, we only had the gray card. With the x right not only do we have the gray card in the middle, but we do have something to help us with a little bit of our contrast or our exposure. We have our blacks and we have our whites. So to start off with, I'm going to go through the same process. I'm going to start with the exposure, then do white balance, and then do color correction. So just like before, I'm going to be in my Lumetri scopes and my effects panel. I'm going to enlarge this because the passport's smaller to 200 and get this in view. I'm going to take my opacity pen tool and I'm going to draw a frame around all three of these tones or the grays. I'm going to go to my Lumetri scope. I'm going to open up my Luma and I'm going to close my vectroscope. So taking a look at this, so taking a look at the Luma, the white that's on the card should rest somewhere around 80, which we're pretty close. My middle gray should be somewhere in between 50 and 40. And then the black, that glossy black, I'm going to try to keep it around 10 uh, because if I drop it too much, I'm going to start to lose details in my blacks. And I believe that glossy black is like pure black uh, if, you, if you lower it all the way uh, just above the zero. So I'm going to try to keep these values close to 80, 45, and 10. And they're pretty close as it is. So let me go ahead and go to my color wheels. I'm going to start with the mid-tones and just bring those down a little bit until I get a little bit under 50. I'm going to take my highlights, which is the white card right here. I'm going to bring that up to about 80. And then the blacks are my shadows. And I'm going to drop or Actually, you know, I'm going to leave them right there because it's in between 0 and 10. I think I'm just going to leave it like that. Maybe drop the mid-tones a little bit and raise the highlights a little bit more. Yeah, I think that looks good. I'm going to go back to my effects control. I'm going to select my mask. I'm going to delete my mask because in order for me to copy and paste, in order for me to copy and paste onto my white balance, I kind of want to see what I'm going to do because it's the next card down. So this is going to be my white balance. Before I end up doing that, I want to copy my Lumetri color with my exposure into my white balance. And just to keep it consistent, I'm going to go ahead and delete this one. So now I'm at my, my white balance. I'm going to be in my effects control. I'm going to draw a mask around my white card or the white balance checker. And you can tell this one's a little bit brighter than the gray card. So our exposure should be a little higher on this one if I take a look at my Lumetri scope. So yeah, so that's sitting up 70. And I think the other one was somewhere around uh, below 60. So to do my white balance, remember I need my parade RGB. I'm going to hide my waveform. And just like the last one, the green, right, the red's a little high, green's a little low, and blue's a little, a little higher than the green. The last one, the green and the blue were almost even, and the red channel was a little high. So this one, I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to go to my basic color correction. I'm going to select my white balance eyedropper, and I'm going to click into the center of that. Take a look at this one again, and these evened out pretty well. 
just to double check, I'm going to head over to my vector scope YUV, hide my parade, and again, that center dot is in the middle. There's nothing reaching out, so I don't have any color cast, so it looks like my white balance is good. Go back to my effects control. I'm going to delete my mask. I'm going to set this back to fit. I'm going to copy and paste my new Lumetri color panel into or back into where the color squares are now. So this one is now going to contain my white balance and my exposure. And you can see by turning it on and off what it has done. Now what I want to do is turn my Lumetri scope. Okay, it is. It's on the, the vector scope. YUV. I'm going to go to my effects control and I'm going to select my opacity pen free draw. I'm going to increase this because the chips are really small. I'm going to go to 400. And I'm going to do my colors just like it did on the last one. If they're not perfect, I'm able to adjust them, but that looks fine. And if you notice, the color chips are less saturated. If you remember what I said before, these are 50% saturated, whereas the chips for the data color are fully saturated. So I'm good there. I got my mask, got my vector scope, and now you can see that the saturation is, is much lower than it was on the previous one. I'm going to go to my basic corrections. I'm going to increase my saturation. I want to make sure that these things are lining up. And wow. Yeah, so these look pretty good with the exception of blue. If you remember on the other one, we had magenta and yellow and cyan. Those were all off. This one looks pretty good. So I'm going to go ahead and take my blue under my curves. Remember, we're looking hue versus hue. So I'm going to go, I'm going to click blue. I'm going to click magenta, red, yellow, green, and cyan. And if you don't click these, then it's going to move the entire line. And again, I want to push shift on my keyboard and then click on the blue. And I'm going to lower it or raise it to get the blue lined up. And that looks fine. I don't really need to touch anything else. So now I'm going to go back to my basic color correction. I'm going to redo or double click to get my saturation back to normal. I'm going to go to my effects control and delete my mask. I'm going to set this back to fit. Now I have my color correction, my exposure, and my white balance all contained with this Lumetri color. I'm going to click on it and I'm going to copy it to the last tile and paste. So now if I go back and forth, this tile was a spider checker, 24, and then this selection is the X-ray. So going back and forth between the two, spider checker, X-ray, spider checker, X-ray. I didn't do any color grading. Color grading is going to be a preference thing. So I just wanted to take a look at the basic corrections, white balance and exposure. And what do you guys think? Put some comments down below. Do you like the spider checker or do you like the x right results? If we take a look at the white balance, take a look at the temperature. The temperature of the spider checker is at negative 8 and it's negative 6.4. Now this could have something to do with uh, glare on the gray card. And like I had mentioned before, this is not in an exact science. This is just getting it close. I don't think there's any such thing as perfect color. And speaking of perfect color correction, I wanna jump in here before I get to the color grading part of this. And first of all, thank everybody that is still sticking around. I know this is a long one, about 20 minutes or so. I'm almost done but I want to give you a couple of reminders. Number one, this is working with picture profiles 
and JPEGs. This doesn't necessarily work with or have anything to do with picture taking in RAW and shooting in RAW. That's a completely different beast. And the next thing is if you're working with data from a video file or a picture, the reason why you're using the scopes is because you're working with the data that's being captured with the video and the picture. You really kind of want to hesitate. Don't really focus in on your monitor and what your monitor is telling you to do. So your monitor could have a blue tint to it, a warm tint to it. The color calibration might not be that great, but we're mainly focused in on the scopes and what the scopes are telling us. Data color makes a uh, monitor calibration tool. I'll link that in the description along with both of these uh, color cards. Be prepared, they're, they're expensive, uh, especially for what you think they should be. Now they do have uh, inexpensive gray cards that I think that are $10, but the Spider Checker 24 that I'm using came with the Spider Checker uh, monitor um, calibration tool. And then the Passport, I believe is uh, above $100 at the time of making this video. And then X-Rite also makes a larger calibration chart as well. So just be be prepared for the uh, the sticker shock. These are not uh, cheap tools. And it may be warranted, it may not. And that's another thing that I want to kind of stress uh, to you guys. Color correction and color grading may not necessarily be for everybody. This is not something that you absolutely 100% need to do. Coming from a YouTuber, I only recently started getting into color correction and color grading about a year ago, maybe a little bit, a little bit longer than that. But up until uh, this point, it doesn't really matter. Uh, do people care? So post some comments down below. Do you really look at the color science that that somebody has on their videos, and it does does it really make that much of a difference to you in your own videos? The picture profiles on Canon might be good enough. The colors that are coming out of Canon might be good enough. You might not want to do anything other than just maybe punch it up a little bit and you know give us some extra contrast and that might be enough for you. So all of this is subjective. I sound like a broken record here and it's it all boils down to what you want to do. Now I'm also going to tell you and I think I mentioned this earlier, don't rely on all the stuff that I'm telling you. Hopefully if you've gotten to this point, you're getting something out of it and maybe you can take away one or two points that you may have not known before or considered. My flow, my workflow is different than other people's workflow. Mine might sound a little bit more complicated. Somebody else's might be a little bit better for you. So do your own research, get out there and look at a ton of people and see if anything that they do works better for you than what I'm doing. So with all that being said, now let's go ahead and move on to the color grading which is putting a flare or your own individual style onto your footage rather than focusing in on proper colors. Moving on to color grading. This is all preference. You're gonna do what you like uh, to the footage to put your fingerprint on it to make it look like what you want it to look like. The two clips that I have here loaded up is from earlier in my video. So I have the color cards. I don't have that goofy look on my face. Now I, I'm just goofy because that's just my face. Taking a look at these two clips, the first one is the Spider Checker, the second one is the X-Rite. Now, taking a look at my Waveform Luma, you can see that the uh, the Checker 24 is a little bit lower in exposure than the X-Rite. I can go ahead and change all this. Now, from this point forward, my suggestion would be don't put all of the adjustments on your already color corrected footage create an adjustment layer and put it on top. How you do that, just on this bottom panel, I'm not sure, sure what this panel is called, the project panel maybe, because it says project. <laughs> so the project panel down on the right-hand side, you can hit new item, go ahead and create an adjustment layer, name it whatever you want or don't, and then just take the adjustment layer and put it on top of your footage. So all of the adjustments that you make to your adjustment layer can be taken away without affecting your original cor color corrected footage. So do any of the adjustments on the adjustment layer when you're doing your color grading and you should be good. I'm just gonna go ahead and divide this so I don't put them on, on both of these um, 
these clips, the adjustment layer, and you can do this either way. You can do all of your color correction on an adjustment layer, or you can do all of your color grading on the adjustment layer. I, again, just would suggest not doing them both on the same, on the same thing, because then you get confused on what is my color correction and what is my color grading. So taking a look at the adjustment layer, I wanna brighten this up. So I'm gonna just go ahead and add some contrast. I'm going to bring my whites up. I don't wanna bring them up so high that they clip, but right about there is okay. I'm gonna drop my shadows a little bit. I'm gonna bring up my highlights. And again, I don't wanna clip at 100 with my whites and I don't wanna clip at zero with my blacks. I just kinda of wanna keep them uh, pretty even. And I just wanna spread the gray tones out and just give it a little bit more punch and contrast. I'm hitting these parameters, so what I'm gonna do is just take my saturation and drop it down a little bit so these um, don't reach that line. That looks pretty good to me so far. So now I'm gonna go ahead and slide over to the x right and I'm gonna do the same thing with my x right I'm just gonna kinda of eyeball it here. I'm going to bump up my exposure. I'm going to drop my blacks. I'm gonna bring my shadows up a little bit. I'm gonna bring my highlights up a little bit. Contrast, yeah, let's contrast a little bit. So I'm gonna go ahead and leave it at there. I'm hitting uh, pretty close to this border, so I'm going to take my saturation and just lower my saturation you know, down a little bit. And I'm pretty happy with that one as well. And that's all I do for my color grading. Just kind of get it to the way that I want it to look and just go with that. Oop, and you, can you see what I did? I did everything on this one. So now I have no idea what my color correction was as opposed to my color grading. See, heating my own, not heating my advice. And again, I, I don't know uh, what I had going there. So what, I, what I'm gonna do is I'm just going to delete this entire thing. I'm going to find the clip that I had my color corrections on from my goofy face, which I believe was this one. Oh, it was this one. So I'm gonna take this one, I'm gonna copy it. I'm gonna go back and go back to my clip. I'm gonna select my my original footage. I'm gonna put my color correction on that one, click on the adjustment layer, and now I'm gonna go through all of my adjustments again. So take a look at my elementary scope. Well, I'm not gonna sit here and uh, recorrect what I, what I just got wrong. You guys get the idea. So that's where I'm gonna leave it today. Um, do all those things that you normally do if you guys have made it this far like, share, subscribe, comment down below. If you're not a subscriber and you kind of dig this information, go ahead and uh, consider clicking on that subscribe button. And I think that's where I'm gonna leave it today. So I'll see everybody in the next one. Bye.